Hello, my name is Daniel and I work as one of the curators at the Library of the London School of Economics. I work with some of the library's archives and special collections that cover topics to do with politics and international relations. And this video looks at the topic of internationalism, peace and children's rights, both past and present. So what is internationalism? Well, imagine a very busy junction with roads meeting from lots of different directions and people trying to cross in different ways, in cars, on foot or on bicycles. Without any agreed rules between everyone on how to safely cross the road, it would be a very dangerous place. And so when it comes to countries trying to work together towards something, it can be easier if everyone is following the same rule book. So internationalism is when different countries across the world agree to work together towards some common aim, like peace. Which brings us to the League of Nations, which was founded after World War I in 1919. The League was set up for nations to solve their differences through discussion between delegates rather than war. It was based in Geneva in Switzerland and its goals were to maintain peace and stop war, encourage disarmament, which means getting rid of weapons, and improve living conditions for people globally. It had a wider remit to protect human rights for men, women, and children, and it held its first meeting in January 1920. There had been so much suffering in the First World War, most people didn't want to fight a war again. The League of Nations was seen by many as a place where the world could change for the better. This included for children. There were still lots of issues in the world after the war, such as famine, treatment of refugees and smaller wars. In Britain, two societies formed to create the League of Nations Union. This group became a leading pressure group for peace and international cooperation. The League and the Union was very popular in Britain and had over 400,000 members at its peak. The League hoped to avoid war. It was entirely new to work with nations in this way, and this was called internationalism. The League of Nations Union also had junior branches, a bit similar to the way schools or youth groups today can be a UNICEF rights respecting school. So one that signs up to the UN Convention on Children's Rights. The League of Nations was not the only organization working internationally towards peace. Whilst Europe was engaged in the First World War, over 1,000 women from across Europe and America made the dangerous trip to The Hague with the aim of stopping the war. Once they arrived, they founded the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom, or WILF, to study, make known, and eliminate the causes of war. And they still exist to this day. Women also played a very important role in the League of Nations, such as Rachel Crowdy, who headed the Department of Opium Traffic and Social Issues section of the League of Nations. The 1930s saw the rise of dictatorship and nationalism, and eventually World War II broke out. This shows some of the difficulties in trying to get so many different countries working together for the aim of peace. One problem was that not every country in the world was a member of it. After World War II, a new organization was formed called the United Nations or UN with the aim of preventing any future wars. As a part of this work, the UN also founded a really important document called the Universal Declaration of Human Rights which sets out basic rights and freedoms that everybody in the world has. LSE Library is an official depository of UN material, which means the UN sends it lots of internal documents related to the workings of the UN, which is a really important resource for people who research this organization. We also have the archives of the League of Nations Union, which has documents that reveal what was discussed and decided at its various meetings. The UN today has continued to grow ever since its founding. In 1989, it established the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, which attributes the rights and freedoms that belong to all children. 
Today, it is a huge organization with lots of different bodies. It doesn't just look at preventing wars, but helps nations work together internationally on all sorts of issues like the climate crisis, refugees, the global response to COVID, poverty, and child labor. Thank you.